splash of a droplet, a bubble flowing in the air, or little drops on the bottom of your glass when you finish drinking milk. Fluids can be beautiful, unexpected, and fun. That's why they've captured the attention of fluid engineer Manu Prakash. In his research at Stanford University, he turns simple observations into new technologies. We are a very uh, curiosity-driven lab. Uh, we play around uh, uh, and figure out the things that we observe in a day-to-day -day basis, but then we actually critically examine that to take the lessons from those day-to-day -day very simple observations and apply that to build uh, technologies that are faster, better, cheaper. One of his projects is trying to make a fluid computer. That's right, a computer that runs on drops and bubbles rather than electricity. Manu has learned how to make drops and bubbles talk to each other or use fluids to control fluids. A transistor is an extremely elegant way to manipulate information where if given a signal to be either on or off, it can decide or tell another signal to do something. So we took that same idea and implemented these little transistor gates, but now using fluids, where another control line that has little bubbles walking through will tell a different circuit to do either go right or go left. And depending on if you went right, it was the on switch, and if you went left, it's the off switch. So it uses exactly the same language of what an uh, electronic transistor does but now does that with a fluid. This is different from how we normally control fluids with other objects, like pipes controlling the flow of water in your house or dams that change the flow of rivers. Unlike in when you think of a dam, you put an external object there and that is regulated by something else. We came up with physics that actually allows fluid particles to talk to each other and that's what we call hydrodynamic fields, where these little bubbles that travel around in a circuit are actually influencing the behavior of other bubbles. He found that fluids can be very complex and chaotic, like crazy patterns formed by the rapids in a river. But if you keep the conditions the same, even rapids do the exact same thing over and over again, forming beautiful patterns in the water surface. And that's very powerful because it gives you the sense of empowerment that yes, this is a very complex system, but if you understand the physics, you get to utilize it in a very repeatable way. Um, it's almost to a point that it's sometimes for us hard to believe how repeatable fluid phenomena are. Manu talks about his strategy for going from simple observations to complicated new technologies. It's a very simple step-by-step. -step. It takes a long time to really get to the bottom of all these common things that you see. But it, it's, it's like a little detective work. Uh, we act like Sherlock Holmes, and you would go and try to poke clues at it. But making it not work is a really good clue. Want to be a detective in the fluids world? Check out the Curiosity Machine to build the Fluid Rube Goldberg Challenge.